everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking today about the impact that pipelines have on wildlife and wildlife habitat. This is going to be an unbiased video and we're going to talk about the scientific facts. A lot of people have really strong feelings about pipelines, but not a lot of people actually know much about the impacts that they have on wildlife and wildlife habitat. In this video, I'm not gonna be pro or anti pipelines in general, but I'm gonna give you the information to make your own decisions about how these linear disturbances impact wildlife. wonder how could something that's put underground affect animals above grounds. Pipelines are built along a pipeline right-of-way and so a pipeline right-of-way is pretty much the area that's going to be cleared in order to put the pipeline in. Pipelines in general in length can range anywhere from just a few kilometers long to thousands of kilometers long across this entire country. So associated with these pipeline right-of-ways, there are the physical impacts of clearing this much habitat that's going to be removed and almost useless to most animals for at least a few years. Reclamation of pipeline right-of-ways or replanting the plants and vegetation in order to restore the habitat does happen, but it doesn't come right away. It takes a long time to restore habitat, especially in areas with old growth rainforest, such as where I am today. However, it gets even more complicated when you look at what species does the primary habitat loss affect. So habitat loss due to pipelines is unique depending on the species. When an area is disturbed, vegetation is going to come back in stages. Once you clear a pipeline right away, the next year some little vegetation is going to come up and that is what is going to attract black bears and some of the other animals that enjoy feeding on those little shoots and roots that come up right away. We can't always say a pipeline right away is going to completely impact all wildlife the same way and that's why we look at things on a species by species basis as well as in an ecosystem's basis. An animal that relies on something such as specifically old growth rainforest is going to have a hard time dealing with vegetation that's going to grow back within the first few years of construction completion. When that forest is wiped out, it is going to be reducing the habitat for the birds that specifically need old growth forest. Those birds, it's harder for them to adapt to the newer growth forest, so they're gonna have more difficulty making that habitat work for them versus a bear is able to adapt. Some animals are not able to adapt to that loss of habitat. For species at risk, an incredibly sensitive species, the loss of wildlife habitat is especially more crucial. Some species have so little habitat left that a 50 meter wide right of way is going to wipe out a large percentage of their habitat. For example, a northern leopard frog could have only one breeding pond, and so if that pipeline goes right through the breeding pond of the northern leopard frog, that's not good. It's going to completely just decimate the populations of that species. However, many pipelines do root around these incredibly sensitive habitats. However, there's always going to be habitat loss. Unless you root it only in disturbed land, there is going to be at least some sort of loss of habitat for wildlife species. What do you think happens when a pipeline hits a river ecosystem like this one? They actually will drill under it. By using horizontal directional drilling instead of just straight cutting right through the habitat, that's going to reduce the impact on sensitive ecosystems such as these. So there are construction techniques that will help reduce the impact that pipelines have on the environment. So behind me here is a hiking trail. So a hiking trail is a very simple form of a linear disturbance. It is a single straight line that's going to be intersecting, bisecting a habitat. When you have untouched, unfragmented habitat and then you add a big line or a corridor going down the middle, it's actually going to have an impact on wild wildlife and wildlife movement. It could be as simple as just an animal not really wanting to go along that corridor because there is a lot of human activity and that's called a sensory disturbance. It could also be a little bit more complex than that where the animal will actually take advantage of the linear disturbance. It's much easier to travel down a cleared corridor than for example a bog with a lot of dense understory so some animals will actually use those corridors. So for example caribou are one of the species that love to use these corridors made in habitat that pipelines create. So here's the thing, it might seem like it's a benefit for caribou to have this linear path that they could travel down. However, 
wolves also like using these corridors. So when a caribou is traveling down a clear straight path where you can see a mile ahead in the distance, that caribou walking down there, and then you have a wolf a mile back watching the caribou, it's gonna be much easier for the wolf to hunt the caribou because he has a close line of sight on the caribou when naturally the caribou would be in denser areas and more hidden from predators. Now, what about the pipelines that root along existing disturbances such as roads? By rooting a pipeline through existing disturbances, that's really going to reduce the impact that the pipeline overall has on wildlife and their habitat. A 100 meter wide right of way with trucks and construction equipment running down it is going to be unusable for almost all wildlife that has some sort of disturbance to human activities during the construction period. Pipeline companies are often required to do something called a nest sweep or a wildlife feature sweep in order to ensure that when they bring in the bulldozers they're not digging up any sort of bird nests or anything like that or digging up a bear den in the winter but these are not perfect. It is impossible to get 100% of the nests identified and that also also brings me into the impact that pipelines have on wildlife mortality because there are, is going to be some mortality when construction is occurring during the breeding season. So let's think of an example species, bats. So when construction activity happens, it often will occur 24 seven and there's a night shift. Not always, but sometimes some of the big drills through water courses will run with 24 seven construction. When there's large lights at construction sites, that's going to attract little bugs that buzz around the lights. You know what also is attracted by little bugs is bats. If there are little bugs around all the construction lights, bats are going to be attracted to the construction area and that's going to increase the potential mortality for bats at a construction site. They're much more likely to collide with equipment or otherwise be caused harm if they are coming into this construction area. Another issue with mortality is the loud noises of pipeline construction is going to have an impact on the ability for birds in that area to successfully nest. I've personally seen hawks swooping down on construction equipment extremely bothered by the loud noise in the area that's not part of their natural environment. Another thing to consider in ecosystems with lots of water features, whether that's waterfalls like the ones behind me, rivers, creeks, streams, is that once the pipeline is operational, there is going to likely be leaks. Wind products such as bitumen leaks into a water system such as a wetland, that's gonna have some major ecological issues. Often a spill from a pipeline that gets into a water course like this is often going to lead to fish kill, mortality of benthic invertebrates, and long-term accumulation of the spilled material and its contaminants in that ecosystem. Spills from pipelines can be incredibly detrimental to the health of the environment. In the case of a large oil spill in an area such as salmon spotting grounds, it can be devastating for the fisheries stock, food for the local people, and for the health of salmon and some of the animals that prey on salmon and other fish species. Now what about when the pipeline is finished and product is flowing through the pipeline? There's another consideration is the marine ecosystem. So for example, a lot of pipeline terminals are placed at ports, seaports, and those seaports are where the tankers come in, load up the bitumen or other pipeline product, and bring it overseas for sale as raw product. And so there is an increase in tanker traffic when pipelines are creating additional need to move product overseas. An increase in tanker traffic is going to have a devastating impact on some species that are more impacted by tanker strikes, such as the southern resident killer whale. So the fewer tankers that we have, the better for wildlife. Now it's up to you to make up your mind about how you feel about new pipeline development. It's extremely important to look at the scientific facts behind all the political rhetoric and form our opinions from facts and not pseudoscience. Make sure you're taking in information from unbiased sources. Scientific sources that are peer reviewed can often be a good choice. And remember to look at the money. Where is the facts and information you're getting about the oil and gas industry coming from? I didn't cover all the impacts that pipelines have on wildlife, but that's a bit of an introduction, Pipelines 101, and some of the things that I've learned while working on pipeline projects across Canada for the last five years. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button down below. I make videos about wildlife biology, conservation, environmental science in general. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.